Welcome to the GasBatch Pro Online Training Module number 7. In this module, I'll be discussing the maintenance that can be performed on the instrument. The GasBatch Pro was designed so that basic maintenance can be performed on the instrument, allowing for maximum performance with minimal downtime. Items like sensors, filters, and batteries are consumable items, therefore may need to be changed out periodically. The instrument itself does have a lifetime warranty and can be serviced at an authorized repair facility. If you have any further questions, by all means call Industrial Scientific toll free at 1-800-338-3287 or locally by calling 412-788-4353. The sensor is the heart of the instrument because it is what detects the gas. Considering this, it can also be the weak link. Understanding the operations of this technology is imperative to help extend the life of these sensors and maximize the instrument's overall performance. The only sensors that the user can get within the Gas Badge Pro is the electrochemical sensor. If you could see the inside of this sensor, this is what you could see. At the top is the Teflon membrane and underneath that is the capillary tube. The capillary tube is where the gas enters into the electrochemical sensor. Going down even further than that is the O-ring which holds the parts of the sensor together. Underneath the O-ring you have your working electrode, reference electrode, and counter electrode. These electrodes are made up of precious metals, all different metals comparing to the chemistry needed to detect the specific gas that the sensor is made to detect. As well as the electrodes, you have the spool wick and then the electrolyte reservoir. And the electrolyte reservoir holds about 1 cc of 40% pure sulfuric acid, so you don't want to be taking the sensor apart. This screen shows pretty much the same thing you saw earlier. You have your three electrodes and also the acid electrolyte, or what some may say is just like battery acid. I like to think of the electrochemical sensor is just like a battery you have in your car. Now the difference between your car battery and the electrochemical sensor is that the car battery is always producing a current. And the electrochemical sensor is only producing a current when the gas that it's designed for enters that sensor. Once the gas that the sensor is designed for diffuses in it, it is then that the acid electrolyte creates a chemical reaction within the reservoir. And that chemical reaction will then react with the electrodes and a current is produced. Depending on how high the concentration of gas is within the atmosphere that you are testing is how much current the sensor is being produced. So in essence, all your Gas Badge Pro is, is basically a digital multimeter measuring the current coming off of the sensor. And the higher the current, the higher the reading of measurement on the display of your Gas Badge Pro. This screen shows what I call the electrochemical sensor response curve. What this screen is telling you is that it typically takes 30 seconds to get 90% of the response to the atmosphere that you are testing. And to get 100% of what's in the atmosphere that you are testing, it typically takes two minutes. Now what this tells me is that if I am the one in charge of monitoring an area, I can't just continuously walk around the area and know that there is no gas that could possibly harm my coworkers. What I need to do is stand in one spot and wait at least two minutes to make sure that my sensor is seeing 100% of what's in the atmosphere. Once I've waited two minutes and my instrument is reading zero, I can now step to the next area that I must monitor and do the same thing over again. The electrochemical sensors that you could possibly have inside of the Gas Badge Pro are oxygen, carbon monoxide, hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, chlorine dioxide, chlorine, hydrogen cyanide, ammonia, hydrogen, phosphine, and also the COH2 null sensor, which is pretty much a carbon monoxide sensor that filters out the hydrogen interference. Since sensors are consumables, they do have a life expectancy that is best determined during calibration. An oxygen sensor typically lasts anywhere from 18 to 24 months, as the other electrochemical sensors can possibly last anywhere from 1 to 4 years. 
A date code can be found on the sensors to help determine if the sensor is passed or within warranty. Most electrochemical sensor date codes can be read by the last three digits of that long number located on the sensor, or also called the serial number. The first two numbers tell the user the month, and the last digit tells the user the year it was manufactured. So in this example, the electrochemical sensor shown shows 017. That tells me that the first two numbers are the month of January, and the last number tells me that the sensor was made in 2007. So this sensor was made in January of 2007. Other sensors, though, have a little bit of a different day code on them. This is easy to detect because if there is a long number split between a hyphen and then three more numbers, then this is how you are going to have to read these sensors. These sensors are the hydrogen chloride, the hydrogen cyanide, ammonia, chlorine, and chlorine dioxide sensors. How you read these sensors are by the last three digits. But with these sensors, the first number tells you the year, and the last two digits show the week that it was made. So in this example, going by the number 722 and what we had just learned, I know that this sensor was made in the year 2007 because of the first digit, and I know that it was made on the 22nd week. So I know that this sensor was made roughly around May of 2007. The Gas Badge Pro has a lifetime warranty, but still provides a manufacturer's date located on the back side of the instrument. The way the user can figure out the date code on the Gas Badge Pro itself is the first four digits of the instrument's serial number, the first two being the year and the last two being the month. So in this example, the first two numbers tell me that the meter was made in the year 2005, and the last two numbers tell me that the meter was made in November. So this meter was manufactured in November of 2005. The Gas Badge Pro's lithium battery can be replaced, and in this video I am going to show you how to do just that. First, you are going to turn the instrument over and loosen the four screws on the back of the instrument. Then using both hands, take apart the case halves. From there, the instrument's main board will be exposed and you will see the lithium battery at the bottom of the instrument. You can then pull the lithium battery out of the socket and stick the replacement battery in. Keep in mind, before you put the replacement battery in to check the polarity, make sure the positive end goes to the positive side of the board. Once the replacement battery is in, you can now tighten up the four screws and turn the Gas Badge Pro back on. The Gore-Tex filter, located at the top of the Gas Badge Pro, can be replaced at any time. The user should replace this filter, especially if it's dirty or scratched in any way. This shows the user how to replace the Gore-Tex filter. First, the best practice would be to use latex glove, 
So what you should do is take a tool and pry a little portion of the filter up just enough so you can grab the filter. Once you have the Gore-Tex filter pulled off, make sure that area is not dirty or any sticky material is still left. From there, you can now attach the new Gore-Tex filter and your Gas Badge Pro is ready to go. The sensor in the Gas Badge Pro can be removed whenever the sensor in the Gas Badge Pro fails. This shows the user how to remove the sensor in case one ends up failing. First you will want to turn the instrument over and loosen the four screws on the back of the instrument. After you've got the four screws loosened, you will want to use both hands to pull the case halves apart. Once the case halves are apart, you will notice the sensor's flex tail that will need to be pulled from its socket on the main board, as well as a Phillips head screw that will need to be taken out as well. From here, take the lithium battery out and then pull the flex tail out of the main board socket. And then unscrew the Phillips head screw. Once you've got the screw taken out, you can now pull up on the main board and take that out as well as the sensor itself. After you have taken everything out of the case top, you are now ready to replace the sensor. First you will want to put the bottom end of the sensor in, then rock the sensor back till it's in flush with the upper portion of the case top. Once the sensor is in place, you can now reinsert the main board. After the main board is in, insert the sensor flex tail into its socket. Then screw the one screw back into the main board. After that is done, insert the battery. Make sure to check for polarity. Put the two case halves back together and tighten the four screws. And finally, remember, if you have any other questions regarding this Gas Badge Pro or any other instrument in that case, by all means, don't hesitate on calling. Our Technical Service Center can be reached toll-free at 1-800-DETECTS or 1-800-338-3287 or locally at 412-788-4353.